And welcome back to our look at Japanese culture. And today we're looking at the game of Go, as Go. you might be able to Go. guess. Go. Go. Which is a very, uh, very short name for a very complex game. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's, and, and it's not just played in Japan, but it's mm. played all around the world, uh, but most notably Japan, China, and Korea. Correct. Yep. Um, and uh, it's, it's well known as one of the more... Uh, complicated in, in a sense of more strategic shall we say uh, of the pure strategy game so no dice no luck uh, <laughs> you just gotta win by your, your strategy alone Pure thought and strategy exactly and a very simple game as we see it's just a black and white stone that are born very very basic uh, simp sim simple to, to grasp mm -hmm. the basic principles but complex enough to spend a whole lifetime uh, learning. Absolutely. And so we're not going to go into all the different terms for all the different rules and so forth and uh, the different ranks. We should probably talk about ranks here real ranks. quick. So this is, this is such an exciting game that people uh, uh, have developed different levels of skill and expertise. Mm -hmm. And they've stratified into different ranks. Mm. Uh, going from an amateur status. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe the name's Kyo? Yes, Kyo, uh, Q, I think. Q. Yeah. Uh, Q uh, status uh, to the professional ranks of Dan, mm -hmm. uh, professional Go players, and you start out with a very, very large Q mm -hmm. number. Mm -hmm. So say Q thirty, and you work your way to a low Q number, uh, thirty down to one, mm -hmm. and when you surpass that, you go to the level of Dan, mm -hmm. and that's when you're a professional, mm -hmm. and your Dan level starts out at one, and then uh, goes up to seven, mm -hmm. and then there's an Eight and a nine, mm. and I think there's a special, uh, a special name for uh, a special title mm. in, the, in the Japanese uh, uh, Go world for the person who's the head Go master. Ah, yes, and <laughs> has achieved the <laughs> the ultimate bliss. <laughs> <laughs> you can see why. I mean, this can be such a, a complicated and uh, um, um, brain stressing game. You definitely <laughs> want to get to that point where ah. It all it all makes sense. <laughs> so it's it's usually played on a nineteen by nineteen grid, mm -hmm. and on the grid you alternate mm -hmm. placing stones yep. one at a time, mm -hmm. and your objective is to seize control over the space on the board. I see. And if you encounter your opponent, um, you can surround your opponent. Okay. And if you have surrounded him completely, you can remove his stones from the board and thus secure his space for your own. So what does surround your opponent completely mean? Good question. <laughs> so a as a grid, you can see most of the spaces have four different locations mm -hmm. where uh, a stone uh, it can be placed adjacent to it. And uh, those Better, spaces, yeah. when they're blank, mm -hmm. are, are a liberty, a space where they can... Okay. Uh, mm. A stone could be placed. Mm -hmm. uh, if a stone has all four sides blocked off, it no longer has any liberty uh, and it is surrounded. Okay. So if your su opponent has each of those sides blocked, mm. they've surrounded you and they take your stone off. Ah, uh, of you're captured. You're captured. Gotcha. And can that be done uh, uh, to large swaths of pieces at a time? Uh, it can be done mm. to large groups, but it means that they have to be completely surrounded. There can't uh, be a single space where they can still move. Gotcha. Uh, if there is a single space, they're not completely s surrounded. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. That must be very difficult to do then. That, that is difficult to do in, in many cases. Mm. Uh, there are things called eyes, which are, uh, 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 there's true eyes and false eyes, and these are basically holes that your opponent can never completely uh, get into. It's, okay. it's, it's sort of a, mathematical, logistical mm. loophole where mm -hmm. they won't be able to go mm. without losing their own stone. Ah, I see. <laughs> they won't be able to go in the metaphorical language. So, so these stones are, are black and white, mm -hmm. and, uh, and because one stone uh, is played at a time, mm. it, it can be a very slow-moving game or it can be a very fast-moving game, uh. depending upon the back and forth between the two opponents. Mm. Uh, a lot of thought can go into a move, or mm -hmm. it can be based on instinct and impulse. Yeah, <laughs> so I can imagine. Um, so in a setup like this, obviously, a uh, you know the black stone here 
um, that could be surrounded by a white stone here, and so that would capture that stone, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, now, I, I can imagine as you're kind of building these out, once you get into these situations where you have a lot of, of sort of alternating stones, uh, you can get into a situation where you're kind of fighting for the same territory, and you're trying to sort of capture the same pieces over and over again. Um, isn't there a rule to sort of prevent that? There's a special rule if you're it, where uh, you may have one space where uh, uh, if you take it, it opens up a hole where your opponent can put a stone mm -hmm. and then they could take it. And that could continue into an infinite loop. Mm -hmm. So a special rule was created to stop that. So if that scenario arises, uh, the opponent is not allowed to go immediately back to that spot, must make another play before they go back to that space. Oh, okay. So that gives uh, a chance for the infinite loop to be broken. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a special name for that rule, unfortunately. Okay. I can't remember. Yeah. Do you remember um, the I, name of I the I thought it was something like the co-rule, but I'm going to be uh, overruled by that by a million people. Uh, um, but yes, and, and from what I understand, it, it's no. something along those lines. Um, there's a whole language that goes oh. with the game of Go. And, all the different strategies and patterns <laughs> and moves and spaces. I can imagine. Um, and as I, as I recall, the, the idea was that uh, uh, the board can never be identical more than one time. So you can't go back and forth and, and uh, recreate the same board position. You have to always be changing it. Well, um, there are so many infinite possibilities, it's hard to even do that if you want to. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, it's it, it its complexity mm. uh, is much greater than chess. In mm. each of these stone placements, uh, uh, the board itself being a nineteen by nineteen grid has mm. what uh, eight hundred uh, three hundred eighty one yeah spots spots, and each of those has the option of being open uh, mm. or closed, being with a stone, mm -hmm. and that stone could be either white or black mm. and so those are those are several different options there the the multiple possibilities mm. on a 19 by 9 grid it's just <laughs> mind-boggling yeah. <laughs> yeah I can only imagine and that actually gets to one of the other interesting things about the game is on a board this size you know, I can imagine games progressing for quite a long time um, I mean, you, know, you can very easily start working over here and then have another battle, if you will, starting somewhere else on the board. There, there are different regions of the board, mm. and uh, the corners uh, are, are areas mm. in and of themselves. The center um, is, is a highly disputed area. That's mm. basically control over the board. But if a person starts in the center, it's a very aggressive move. It's uh. like staking your flag in the <laughs> middle of somebody else's country and saying, okay, this is now mine. All right. So it's approached very carefully in a strategic mm -hmm. manner. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, I'm sure there's somebody out there with a great strategy for <laughs> doing that that could really uh, just trounce me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and the, the borders must be interesting, too, because that kind of gives you the advantage that, that fewer stones are needed to capture. They, they are different because there are less spots of liberty, mm. and so it creates a different dynamic when the game is being played. Mm -hmm. uh, strategies have to be uh, considered with that in mind, mm. and having only two other spaces that are available if you're in the corner, that's, that's a very easy stone to take. Yeah. You, you just need <laughs> two <laughs> rather than four to surround it, and yeah. they, it, can, it can be very tricky uh, to work from that as, a, mm. as an area of strength. However, mm. being in a section of the board and attaining dominance means that you may be able to create a scenario where you have a flowing pattern uh. with eyes in it. Mm. And once you have eyes in, in your pattern, if everything's connected, it can't be taken away. Uh. So y you basically have a, a, a section of the board dominated at that point, and you can work from there. Uh, so when one region is looking uh, less promising mm. for your opponent, that your opponent mm -hmm. may move to an area that hasn't uh, been established on the board mm -hmm. and start working to fortify that area I see. and build up a similar situation on that section of the board. So there's a lot of back and forth that can go on uh, uh, as you work with the four different quadrants of the board, mm. and then even those are subdivided. Um, mm -hmm. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but the the basically the stars. Yes. In the 
four corners of the board and the center. There's mm. actually uh, nine, I believe, mm. if you count uh, okay. the center of each side mm. as well. And uh, those are those are kind of um, similar in respect to points of, uh, of power uh -huh. in establishing an area. So people mm. will work around those gotcha. to get to, to control those regions. Gotcha. And you mentioned um, earlier an eye. So I'm assuming that means that where, if you, got, you have a situation that it's where uh, you have, say, four white pieces that surround a blank spot, if black moves in there, it's automatically captured. So how does that work? Hmm. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I had a good answer. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming that means that you, you, you can't move in there because that would be suicide. Uh, th there's, there's, there are scenarios where it can be done and mm. scenarios where it can't be done. Interesting. Uh, so it's not just a, 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 an empty hole, but mm. it would be a combination of empty holes within a pattern. Oh. Um, for example, uh, in this board, mm -hmm. if an opponent tried to go into the center of, of ah. this, there's mm -hmm. a flowing pattern where they're all connected. Mm -hmm. That means they can't go there and gather the mm, stones sure. thinking they're surrounded because there's still all these empty spots. Mm -hmm. If these empty spots were filled in and mm -hmm. they went there, it would, oh, it would then be they could capture completely... It because, yeah, yeah, I see. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. aside from that. <laughs> so... Uh, that's only one hole, but if there were two holes, mm. you can only place one stone at a time. Mm -hmm. Leaving a second hole available within the same flowing pattern mm -hmm. means that they can't go there because they'd be committing suicide by, by going there, and they can't place two stones, so they're forced to not uh, take those stones, mm. basically guaranteeing their success to the gotcha. duration of the game. Interesting. Which gets back to your earlier point about kind of wanting those eyes to give you more space. Open eyes are good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Well, with that kind of a, of a game, so how is the game scored? The game is scored with a, by tallying a combination of space that's owned on the board okay. and captured opponents. Ah. But there's also a special variation uh, where the, uh, depending upon who goes first... Uh, the oh. person who goes second has a special allotment of points because okay. there's uh, uh, been deemed a a statistical advantage mm. of the person who goes first, mm -hmm. and so uh, this has been debated uh, over the years. But our, the, our our current information on this says that uh, six point five is mm. the standard number of points allotted. Uh, to the person who's uh, second. Second. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's a special name for it, mm. and of course I can't remember it right now. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but it, it'll come back. It's a great mm. game, mm. Uh, and uh, the uh, the <laughs> <laughs> it's a great game to play. It sure uh, is. Absolutely, it's a fascinating game. The the boards are works of art. In, in many cases, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, it's an amazing, uh, amazing game with a, a very long history. We were just reading up that uh, uh, Ieyasu Tokugawa uh, founded some of the, the great houses of Go back in the day, which is it says a lot. Um, and getting this back to, to anime, um, uh, this is a <laughs> show both of us are well familiar with, Hikaru no Go, which is a series about a, a young boy who gets very much involved in the game of Go, which is a lot of fun. Uh, the anime series came out, gosh, a while ago, um, I think early 2000s, if I'm recalling correctly, um, and it goes on for a long time. The, the manga is even, even longer. If you're in for a, a, quite the story, watching Hikaru grow up with, uh, with this game and getting involved, one of the neat things about the, the, the show is that, and the series is that Hikaru doesn't know a thing about a go. <laughs> It, which is which is great to follow along because you learn about the game of Go in the process. Right. And the the show was so inspiring. Uh, many students uh, uh, and students at Go clubs at mm. schools uh, wrote into the show to yeah. explain how inspiring this was <laughs> to their club activities and how it really got them excited about the game of Go. That's great. 
Um, yeah, and it, it's, a, it's definitely a, 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 a fun series with a, an unusual premise. So uh, it's always neat seeing um, sort of sports metaphors applied to a board game. It's just a <laughs> different way of doing things. It's a lot of fun. So yeah, so that, so uh, oh yeah, uh, Pirate Unix. Oh yes, so <laughs> so this was so successful, uh, Hikaru no Go specifically that uh, there is now a thing called uh, Hikaru Unix which is hilarious, um, which is a Unix uh, or Linux variant specifically with, as I recall, um, just for playing Go? Just for go playing Go, but it's, it's got the other basic uh, operating system features okay. and, and bells and whistles. Mm. Uh, however, it was designed with, uh, inspired again mm. by this anime, mm. and that's, that's why its name, <laughs> uh, the Unix part at the end, of course, because it's Linux, Hyrick <laughs> Unix. Um, it's it's a live distribution, so you can mm. pop it into a, a computer and boot to that CD, and it'll go right into it. It won't touch your your <laughs> regular operating system, and you can play Go against other people wow. in, throughout the internet. You can uh, learn through some of the games there. You can check out uh, games that have been played in the past. Oh. You can record your games and play mm. back games and step through them. And that's it, where it's I went wrong. It's oh. a great learning, <laughs> great learning spot, and it's free. Hey, can't be that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Nice. Um, yeah. So that's the game of Go. That's the game of Go. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>